prepared to really um, accept. And because the Ukraine crisis sort of come on top of what was already a, a quite dangerous situation developing, of course, these problems are becoming exacerbated. Ian, I find your background to this point really quite fascinating because amongst other things, you were senior executive at Royal Dutch Shell, the CEO of the Australian Institute of Company Directors, as well as the chair of the Australian Coal Association. With that background across oil and gas and commodities, how does that inform you when it comes to your, your recommended strategy for how the country comes together when it comes to the climate transition? Because we know now we have uh, more independence and a government that is more ambitious when it comes to the transition. Yeah, well, I think since the Second World War, I mean, the world has developed on the back of cheap fossil energy. And that has produced a great increase in wealth around the world, obviously. It's allowed for the type of economic development that you've been talking about. Uh, <clears throat> through the morning and so on. Um, the problem we've got is we've known for years that uh, sooner or later there was going to be a cost attached to that because of the climate impact and the carbon emissions coming from the use of fossil fuels. And we've now reached that point. We've reached it some years ago. Our leaders have not been prepared to accept the reality of that. And we're now moved from a period where people have talked of uh, orderly transitions to a low, a low carbon world in the future to one where we have left it too long uh, because of inaction and we are now faced with continuing disruption as we try to make that change. Now, we've known about this for a long time. I mean, we now face what's a genuine global emergency in trying to uh, transform the world economy onto a low carbon basis. It is not helped, obviously, by things like the Ukrainian war. And I think what our global leaders have to realize is that conventional concepts of geopolitics and so on are going to have to completely rethought. I mean, leaders are going to have to have a complete reset in the way they look at the world, because what we're faced with is now an existential threat, which has the ability to mm. nothing less than destroy civilization as we know it. So we have to start to face up to that and change the entire basis upon which we're trying to move forward into a sustainable future. Ian, D David here, and you know, as as you point out, you know, the war has reminded not just Australia. I hope every every country uh, it, to look at really their their resource security issues. The more countries that look at that, and it's obviously every right of, you know, it's the right of every country to do so, the more difficult that becomes because I guess for the lack of a better verb, uh, hoarding comes to mind. W what is the multi-nation approach here? Well, you've got to accept that um, the world is now in an era, an era which we have never previously experienced. We've never had something which is a genuine global emergency of this kind. If you look at the IPCC negotiations, the conferences, the UN conferences go on, um, you know, the orientation is around the idea that somehow if we get to net zero emissions by 2050, then we solve the problem. Well, that is complete nonsense. The reality is we have to reduce our emissions extremely quickly now. Uh, our view from the security leaders perspective and based on what the science has been telling us now for about a decade or more is we have to get not to net zero but to zero emissions as close as possible to 2030. Now this is this is a massive task. It's not one that is accepted amongst the uh, the official positions anywhere in the world virtually. But the scientific community have been screaming about this for years. So we are faced if you look around the world right now you see disasters occurring in pretty much every continent you care to look at. You know, whether it's the, the sort of floods and things we've had or having in Sydney at the moment, whether it's what happened in right. China, the extreme heat in India, the uh, problems they have in the Alps in Italy in the last few days. These events are just compounding one after the other in a cascading effect. And we are going to have to just recognize that that's the reality we're facing 
and conventional ideas of economic growth are going to have to change. We cannot continue with the conventional expansion of using more and more resources and pushing more carbon into the atmosphere. We have to go complete reverse as fast as we possibly can. And nobody is talking about that. Now, that comes into the entire geopolitical debate. I mean, whether it's wars in Ukraine or, you know, what happened in the South China Sea or anywhere else, people have got to start to realize there's a much bigger problem, which is how the world is going to manage to handle climate change and stay, uh, you know, provide a secure future for, for humanity. Ian, we'll use that as a jumping off point to our next conversation. Thank you so much for joining us today. Ian Dunlop there, Australian Security Leaders Group Chair. And be sure, by the way, to tune in, not just to that. Of course, we're also on radio here. So in case you're watching TV, we're live here from our studios here uh, in Hong Kong. Also in-depth analysis from our Daybreak team. Listen via the app, Radio Plus, or BloombergRadio.com. That said, there's plenty more on deck ahead. This is Bloomberg. Good morning.